Our frequent guest here on Beat the Press, John Keller, likes to joke about the open sewer of the Internet. Some may debate that, but score one for John this week with news that there is plenty of fake news floating around out there. It's gotten so bad that companies like Facebook are under pressure to do something about it. Talk about a bombshell. Hillary Clinton sold weapons to ISIS. Or how about this shocker? Pope Francis endorses Donald Trump. Then there's this scuttlebutt. FBI agents suspected in Hillary Clinton email leaks found dead. Problem is, all three stories were completely fake, pushed by shady websites masquerading as real news sites. BuzzFeed says fake headlines like those actually surpassed real news on Facebook during the election. And here's the problem. According to Pew Research, 66% of Facebook users say they get their news from the site. Facebook has been slow to admit that the site is rife with conspiratorial bunk and outright fakery. And last week, company founder Mark Zuckerberg was dismissive of the criticism. The idea that uh, you know, fake news on Facebook influenced the, uh, the election in any way, I think, is a, a pretty crazy idea. Some of the fake news seems intended to influence voters, as the vast majority were anti-Clinton or pro-Trump. But there's also a simple financial motive. The stories that tend to go viral are those that tap right into our political instincts. So there's a strong incentive for people who are trying to make money. Now Zuckerberg is promising to flag hoaxes and fake news and cut off ad revenue to sites that traffic in it. Still, as one prolific fake news producer told the Washington Post, there's nothing you can't write about now that people won't believe. P.T. Barnum would be pleased. Well, Josh, I don't understand why, why they can't do something about this. Why, why can't it be like... Uh, any kind of a website, even the, you know, the globe where you monitor comments, why can't you take that stuff down? And, and there's another thing that I've talked about many, many times. All those photographs of dying children, all that say I amen and press here, they're all folks, fakes. They're all algorithms. Everybody's duped by those as well. Why can't they take them down? Well, there are a few reasons that Facebook claims. One is, frankly, they don't want to, right? Why bother with it? That would cost them money. That would cost them uh, a lot of their time. And there's no way to make all those decisions without air angering some portion of your audience, right? Facebook is, is designed to be a pleasure machine. The entire <laughs> idea of the news feed and the algorithm that feeds it is that it tracks the things that you spend time looking at, the things that you click on, the things that you like, and gives you more of that. So it is constantly optimizing it for what it thinks you want. And that, over time, means that if you're conservative, you're going to see more conservative opinions. If you're liberal, you're going to see more liberal opinions. And that's why, you know, we went through this election sort of living, you know, in two separate bubbles of information. And to a degree, that's always existed, right? If you live in a conservative small town, you're going to talk with conservative people. And if you live in Cambridge, you're going to talk to liberal people. <laughs> But what really weaponized this is this injection of fake news. I'm from a small town in Louisiana. I went back and looked at the Facebook page of my mayor. He sh shared the idea that, pa that Pope Francis had, oh. had endorsed Donald Trump. He shared that uh, Obamacare, unless it is el eliminated, will require next year a chip implementation in all of us. These cons you know, dozens and dozens of lies. Yeah. Well, and that's your opinion. Well, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. But uh, Facebook has frankly, had been too cowardly. Right. They, they have been under threat to uh, conservatives have said, if you get rid of this, we'll be mad at you and we'll raise yeah. it up against well, you. Well, in part because they got in trouble when uh, there was uh, the revelation that some human curators were suppressing conservative There content. was no revelation. There was one no. claim by uh, one person that was not true. But that, that led to... Again, Josh, out. that's your... No, <laughs> your <laughs> no, thank, thank you for, yes. for clarifying. But yeah, yes. that seems there's like no that, actual evidence. That has left them feeling very skittish. I think that there's something almost sociopathic about Zuckerberg saying, I think in the same appearance we showed here, that he doesn't feel like it's their responsibility to be the arbiters of what mm. is true and what isn't, because their scope is so huge. Mm. As you said in the piece, um, he might not want that responsibility, but I think he's got it, and I think history will not judge him kindly if they don't find a way to do better. Why, why Google does not, I mean, um, Facebook does not have a monopoly on this. Google does the same thing, Google News. Google does the same thing, and Google also uh, has is going to punish uh, fake news sites by not letting them take part in their advertising network. Um, I, I want to provide a little bit of perspective before I talk about Facebook, and that is fake news has been around with us oh, yeah. forever. Um, in the early days of the Clinton administration, there was this crazy story that still widely believed that, that President Bill Clinton was somehow involved in covering up a CIA drug running operation when he was governor of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And that spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. And every newsroom was getting bugged as to why aren't you looking into this. Uh, but Facebook does make it exponentially more 
out there, shared, people believe it. Um, I don't know, I don't know their business, but it seems to me that it would not be that difficult. They've adjusted the algorithm any number of times. It would seem to me that when your Aunt Gertrude shares something from the Washington Post, it ought to be it ought to be much more likely mm. to show up in your news feed than when she shares something from the teenagers in Macedonia yeah. who were trying to game the system to make a few bots. I just remember a quote from a Pew Research study from some years ago about uh, the changing impact of how people got their information from digital, and there was a focus on young people. And the quote was, if the news is important, it will find me. Uh, meaning that they were receptors of the push out of a lot of this stuff because we are no longer media literate and people are still somehow thinking one source is going to tell them. So if you took the moment to bring yourself up to even a modicum of literacy and went to many sources, it will soon become clear that, believe me, if the CIA story was right, the yeah. Washington Post is running it yeah. because that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's that. So, but people have people to get know. to the point of, yeah. of understanding that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the, the fact that uh, Mark Zuckerberg says that, of course, we all know that's disingenuous, because the reason he got into the whole news feed business to begin with is because he knew this was how mm -hmm. Facebook was being how used.